Hello to all of you out there in this great big world of social media. This is your brother Dana coming to you tonight. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to all of my Hebrew brothers and sisters. Uh, may you be encouraged and let me share this with you. The glory, he's on his way. Your glory is on its way which also led me to do this message tonight for my white evangelical family members to let them know that their double portion is also on its way. It has been shipped. See, and, and this, is, this is what, you know, especially with Amazon and, and all of the mail ordering that we're doing today, anytime you wanna cancel an order, um, if, if it's been shipped, it's too late. There's no canceling it at that time. There's no stopping it at that time. It's been shipped. And so to you, my white evangelical family members, it's been shipped, your double portion. But the big question is double portion of what? Well, Revelations 18 says this, Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Count, come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues, for her sins are piled up to heaven. And God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. Give her as much torment and grief as the glory and luxury she gave herself. So we need to figure out who she is because like I said, Jesus said, come out of her. An angel said, come out of her. So you do not receive this double portion, which is not a double portion that I would ever want to order for anybody, especially myself. So come out of her. Who is the her? Well, if you read in the chapters before, you will find out her is Babylon the Great. It's an empire. A modern, a, a futuristic empire when this was written that was global, that all the nations drank from her evilness and her ungodly ways. An empire to be reckoned with, but an empire that will collapse where all the world will be in astonishment as in a very short days, she will come crashing down. An empire that the world thought would never ever see destruction. I believe that empire is the United States of America and the religion of Christianity make up Babylon the Great. And because what we have done to God's chosen people, we are going to be cursed. And that is not outside of the Christian religion. The only problem is that the Christian religion, which was developed and based on white supremacy, has taught us a lie. A lie that's going to be costly to the United States of America. A lie about who the true chosen children of God really are. See, Revelations chapter 2 verse 9 says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, although you are rich. And I know the blasphemy, the lies of them that say they are Jews, but are not, but are actually the synagogue of Satan. So we've been warned. 
that there will be those who call themselves God's chosen people, but they actually are not. And at that time, the true chosen people will be facing tribulation and poverty. See, that's why I live in an inner city black community. And the reality is, is I don't live with lawless people. I live with royalty. The problem is white America has created them into being people that are not even full human. But according to scripture, they're the true chosen people. So you're going to say to me, I know you are. How, okay, yep. Yeah, where do you come up with that? Well, let me tell you where I come up with that. I come up with that according to what your Bible says in Revelations 1, chapter, four, uh, chapter 1, verses 14 and 15. It says, His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. So the Bible describes him, and as he, as the Bible describes him, I'm sorry. But when I look at these two pictures, and it says his head and his hairs were li white like wool, as white as snow, and his feet, his skin, like unto fine brass that was burned in a furnace. Well, out of these two pictures, I would have to say this is what the Bible describes as the Son of God. And see, and this is why when you, my white evangelical family members, say that you don't care, you don't see color, this is why you're going to get yourself a double portion. Because when you don't want to see color, you don't see who the true Messiah is, which then causes you not to see who the true chosen people are which will then cause you to receive a double portion. See, you say color don't matter, so let's go by your philosophy. You lose your child one day in the mall, and color doesn't matter, so when you sit before security and they ask you to describe your child, you say, well, he is only about four feet tall at this time. He has hair. He has two eyes. He has a shirt on. Oh yeah, and he has shorts and he has these incredible tennis shoes on. That's my son. But see, we see color when we truly want to find what we're looking for. So you would be saying, if you saw color, well, my son is about four feet tall at the time. He has hair and it's a brownish color. His eyes are a bright, bright, beautiful blue. And he has a shirt on and the shirt that he's wearing is purple, but it's also got some blue in it. And if I remember right, it has a picture of Mickey Mouse in the middle and his shorts were all blue because they didn't match, but that's what he wanted to wear that day. And his shoes, they light up when you walk a, a blue color. And, and But the shoes themselves are white and pink and green. Oh, yes. And he's wearing glasses. And his glasses are brown. So for... You not to receive a double portion, the Bible says you need to come out of her. Or if you don't want to go there, then let's go under your own theology of Christianity that says that the nations that bless the people of, the, of God, the chosen people, the Jews, the land of Israel, will be blessed, but the nation that curses them will be cursed. Are you going to plead ignorance that you were lied to by your forefathers and yet wouldn't take the time to ask yourself these few questions like how did the white Hebrews or the Jews that we see today labor in the Egyptian desert sun for 12 plus hours and not die and burn up of skin cancer and other issues that cause us Caucasians, us white people when we're in the sun? Did you think about how God hid 
baby Jesus in Egypt when Pharaoh or when King Herod was after him. If he was white, if this is if this is the true Jesus and this was the Egyptians of dark skin, how did he hide him there? And why didn't he send him to white Europe? Do you know today that the nation of people that have the second highest skin cancer are the Jews in Israel? Very minutely behind the greatest number of people with skin cancer, which are the Australians. And when you look at Australia, it was taken from the dark-skinned Aborigines. So that too makes sense. Have you under, ever wonder why or how our Jews of today speak Yiddish, which is a little bit of Hebrew and a little bit of German, when I don't recall anywhere in my Christian teaching in college that the Bible had any parts of German when it was written? And even the scripture that I declared to you, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, skin like brass burned in a furnace. But every time I also say that to you, your, your, your response is, well, he wasn't black. He would be more like uh, a Pakistanian, an Indian, an Ara Arabian. Well, if that's the case, it's funny how you, you want to pick out our fault if it is a fault that's this much, while yours is black and white difference. So you can, again, overlook yours, but you can't overlook ours, even if I give you your argument. See, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing this to you tonight because although most of you do not care about the slaughtering of our current young black men and women, I want to remind you of something that the Bible says that will take place upon the heads of the individuals of the nations that curse his children, his people. It says again in Revelations 18, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share in her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. COVID-19 might be. For her sins are piled up to heaven, and God has remembered her crimes. Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done. Pour her a double portion from her own cup. So remember everything. Every single additional young black man you slaughter out in these streets is a double portion of what's going to come back to you when your package arrives. Every black family member you oppress or that you demean, that you spit on, that you treat cruelly, double portion is coming back unto you. Every time you want to do this to the truth of what President Trump and white evangelicalism does and says about our black brothers and sisters, remember everything that goes on, whether you see it or whether you want to hear it, it's double portion coming back to you. So if you don't want to be motivated because you choose not to follow what Jesus Christ commanded you to love your neighbor as yourself, and to even love your enemies. If you don't want to follow what Jesus Christ has told you to do in changing your attitude, your behavior, and your actions towards our black brothers and sisters, then maybe this will motivate you. That whatever you continue to allow, whatever you continue to agree with, double portion is coming your way. And I will say this, the package has been shipped. God has shipped it. The 400 years is over for our black brothers and sisters who are the true Hebrews, the true chosen people of God. Their portion of the consequences due to their ancestors is over. But now double portion upon this nation 
and the people who have been disobedient to the word that you say you follow, to the life of Jesus Christ you say you model in the way you treat our black brothers and sisters. Well, know this, it's a double portion for you. The package has been shipped. You cannot cancel it, you cannot return it, and you cannot stop it. It is coming to your home. It is coming to your families. It's coming to your communities and it's coming to your towns and your cities. And so I suggest that maybe you would just stop your mouth long enough to open your ears to have a moment to listen to some of the things that I'm saying to you that clearly puts some doubt in the things that we white evangelicals have been taught for at least 400 years. And then I'd like to suggest you do when it concerns our black brothers and sisters what you have done with all the rest of the media. Call it fake. Because see, you call media and what the media has taught us, somebody very close to me the other day said for all these years, the media has only told us what we, what they want us to hear and what they want us to know. And you grasp that for everything except for this, what you have learned from the media concerning our black family members. That you embrace, that you won't forget, that you declare is not fake. But when I come to you who has lived with our black family members for over 26 years, I'm a liar. You believe the media because you have nothing else to believe, because you've never been anywhere to live amongst our black brothers and sisters, to know the truth. So why is it important to know the specifics as much as we can about who the chosen people of God truly are? Because if you're really looking for the lost, you need to know the color you need to know the features. You need to know the truth about whom you're trying to find so that when God pours his curses out upon the nation that cursed his people with double portion of it, it won't come to you. But you can ignore this and you can continue to do the evil and you can stand by and agree or remain silent about the slaughtering of our black brothers and sisters at this very moment. But remember, every life that is taken, God is going to pay back double portion. That should be enough for you to stop.